so they had an yeah. alien, and I think they did Jim Henson. It was like some sort of puppet um, alien thing, which didn't Not work. So Henson, then they did it a was... re. It wasn't Henson. Then they redid it, and the one that I saw growing up was um, using like light sources, yeah. just like light, like as if it's coming from a mothership or a spirit or something. So. Um, we just really wanted to do, we wanted to make the movie kind of more complete, you know, really explain what happened. Um, in the original one, it's a seance and all this sort of stuff. This one, we, we explain who the watcher is and what it wants. So that was the biggest challenge in making this film was who is the watcher? I just found an email from the writer, Scott Abbott, who sent me this whole thing when we were just developing the story about who is the watcher. And we had to determine who that watcher was. So that was we the hardest back, we, part. We bring in some gothic. I mean, we bring in like the 1600s and the plague and stuff like that into it. So, um, but we stay true to a lot of the stuff that, I didn't watch the movie again um, for like decades. And I, we wanted to get the rights 19 years ago. We tried to get the rights so I could play Jan. But then by the time- that we, many years? It took 17 years to get yeah. the rights. And by the time we did, I was too old to play Jan, too young to play Mrs. Aylwood. <laughs> so I had to direct it. So, um, you know, I mean, what else could I do? But, but it, was, it was really fun. I mean, this is the first thing I've ever directed that I'm not in, which was really fun for me to be in my wellies in Wales with the rain pouring down in the cow farm, you know, at a, on a cow farm in the woods in the back. Like, it was amazing. It was really one of the most exciting and, and creatively fulfilling um, projects of my career. But, um, and if they ask me to do a sequel, I am there, like, next week. Yeah. So, um, but it's, it was so much fun. But at the same time, like, directing and acting is, it's really hard to kind of do both. But yeah, we try, we try to get the rights for 17 years and then um, we finally got them and here we are. So, I, I mean, but the thing, oh, so I was saying the movie, I, when I watched it as a kid, I watched it so many times that it was ingrained in my head. And I really didn't want to go back. We had our own script written and, and we knew what we were doing with this movie and we had scouted the locations and done this amazing casting and, um, and then two days before we started filming, I finally watched the original with my son, who was 10 at the time. And I sat down with him in Wales on a couch, and I said, let's watch this movie together. And we watched it, and he was freaked out, and he was in awe of the movie. And I was like, okay, this is going to be good. Like, I'm excited now that it still holds up, that, you know, that um, with a little bit of updating and some story stuff, we can really... What, what he loved about it and what we kept true to was... The watcher is, it's the POV of the camera. The watcher is watching, uh, we're watching the people that he's watching, right? We're seeing it through his eyes. So the only other movie I can really think of that did it really well in the 80s was Jaws, mm -hmm. right? But it was a device we used a lot back then. And it's a device that's been like overused, I feel like now. And with sophisticated audiences, even my, you know, nine-year-old is, you know, more sophisticated than I was at nine. So I was afraid that device might not work anymore. So I tested it out on my kids and they still got freaked out by it. And I was like, it still works. <laughs> <laughs>